we are back again with another reaction video. Yes, we are, guys. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to the second half of... Power Rangers Zeal Part 1 History of Power Rangers by the channel Linkara Atop the Fourth Wall. The link is down in the description, so if you enjoy the video, make sure you go and subscribe. Yes. It's important to support the channels that you love. Look at that. You we got did, it. We um, did like the this. first 18, 19 minutes of this, so we're going to be doing the next like nine... 10 minutes roughly somewhere in there yeah it's already left at the spot we left off at so mm -hmm. we're good to go um this was a suggestion from dragon trainer 201 thank you so much for the support do appreciate it you guys can also help support the channel if you want to just click on the link down below in the description if you go around through streamlabs and let you pick one of the next videos that we react to just keep it under 10 include the videos link title your email and let's get to this video let's do it stick fresh in a new way the next major story arc comes in The Power of Gold, wherein the Rangers detect two distress signals. The team is split up to hunt them both down, but it turns out that there are traps set Those by Mondo. So the cogs attack in force, oh overwhelming the Rangers. Billy tries to reach them when suddenly something jams the communications and overloads the power systems of Mondo's moon base. As a huge pyramid flies towards Earth and cloaks, Mondo withdraws his forces to prevent losing control over them. Oh great, now the Power Rangers have to deal with the Gaul. Back at the power chamber, Billy overlays the power signature of the Zeo subcrystals over the power signature of the pyramid, and it's an exact match, suggesting that there's another Zeo crystal aboard the pyramid. We never really learn why that is, especially given the history of the Zeo crystal we were given last season, but it's possible the citizens of M51 utilized the Zeo crystal before and kept the sixth part of it somewhere else. The Rangers worry that Mondo's new strategy may split them up even further, since there are only five of them. It used to be six. The Rangers head out to try to find the pyramid, so but a group of cogs attack to distract them. While Billy stays behind with his tracking device, the Rangers get overwhelmed by the cogs and one of Mondo's monsters. However, the team is saved by the arrival of a new Ranger, the Gold Ranger. The Gold Ranger easily wipes the floor with the cogs. He's got a kick-ass golden power staff, moves like the Flash, and of course has his own theme song, much like the Green and White Ranger used wow. to have. Okay. After shrugging off the attacks by the cogs, he manages to dispatch the monster. However, Mondo is able to save it and make it grow. The rangers are forced out of their zords, but the gold ranger summons his own zord, Pyramidus. Pyramidus annihilates the monster, and the gold ranger vanishes before they can figure out who he is. When they return to the power chamber, Billy takes longer to come back. The mystery of the gold ranger was a pretty effective subplot. Most of the signs pointed to Billy being behind it, since he would frequently make himself scarce whenever the Gold Ranger appeared. He never gave an explanation for what he was doing, but while it was never revealed on screen what it was, there was one good theory that we'll get into next time. Another element that added credence to the Billy theory is that Pyramidus seemed designed to incorporate the other Zords to create the Zeo Ultra Zord. And given that Billy was the one who built the Zeo Zords, it makes sense that he designed Pyramidus accordingly. So yeah, we'd never get an explanation for why it can incorporate them otherwise. Rocky's the first one to suspect Billy and confronts him, but Billy says that if he were the Gold Ranger, he'd have told them. In the penultimate chapter of the Gold Ranger mystery, Pyramidus lands on Earth. Mondo sends the cogs down in force to try to find it. The Rangers, in an uncharacteristic display of intelligence, decide to just watch the cogs and let them do the work of finding Pyramidus for them. However, before they can get very far, the cogs <laughs> find them and attack. The Gold Ranger goes out to help and manages to defeat the cogs. When the Rangers finally try to ask him who he is, he's <clears throat> reluctant to talk. Before they can learn anything else, a bounty hunter named Verox attacks, attempting to steal the Gold Ranger's powers. Verox injures the Gold Ranger, who reveals that he can't tell them who he is, or else he'll lose his powers. I don't know why the hell this idea was introduced, since two episodes later we learn exactly who he is. It might have worked yeah, if they weird. had gone right. the Billy as the Gold Ranger route, but this way it's just like they needed an excuse to just not have him tell them who he is. They teleport him to the power chamber, and he reveals that he knows who Zordon and Alpha are before retreating to Pyramidus. So what was the original plan for the Gold Ranger? 
hard to say. I've had difficulty tracking down an official source for the most popular story, though, but, but it's a good one if it's it, true. Like At the same time, yeah. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was on, Saban was producing a similar style of tokusatsu show as it called VR Troopers. In fact, the pilot for VR Troopers, called Cybertron, featured Jason David Frank in the lead. When they ended VR Troopers, one of the actors for it, Brad Hawkins, was brought in to be the voice actor for the Gold Ranger and all the suit footage seen up to this point. Supposedly what happened was that the plan was to make VR Troopers take place in the same universe as Power Rangers, with Brad Hawkins' character Ryan Steele becoming the Gold Ranger. The rumor goes, however, that Shuki Levy changed that at the last second based off a casting decision he wanted to go with, and so the entire Ryan Steele connection was dropped before doing anything but okay, so it's gonna be or a nice the post-production side but... of things. It certainly would have helped the clues provided, since what we actually get is a bit nonsensical, but then again, this is the show that forgot Billy invented a flying car. The Gold Ranger's identity was finally revealed in Revelations of Gold. The episode opens with Pyramidus under attack by a fleet of Verox bounty hunters. Mondo plans to steal the Gold Ranger's powers while the Verox chase Pyramidus to Aquatar, where Pyramidus crashes and the Verox presume him dead. The Equitians take the Gold Ranger under their care, and we finally get to see him without his suit on, and it's absolutely no one we know. Yes, all the hints mm -hmm. and nudges were for nothing. <laughs> his name is Trey that of the is planet dumb. Triforia. The Equitians teleport him to Earth, but Mondo uses a force field around the power chamber so that when he arrives, he'll smash into it and be destroyed. They redirect the signal to a nearby sea and pull him out, but then he splits into three identical copies of himself. He explains that Triforians are made of three distinct personalities that are usually joined as one, but the battle has damaged him to the point where his three personalities have split off into Trey of Wisdom, Trey of Courage, and Trey of Heart. Yes, Trey okay. of Heart, just in case you thought Captain Planet was the only one dumb enough to have that idea. Triforians are a race of peacekeepers who will sometimes venture out to other worlds to help stop evil, hence why he came to Earth to fight King Mondo. However, he's not certain how he can rejoin the three aspects back together, and in this state he's unable to become the Gold Ranger. They need to pass the powers on to someone else or else they'll be lost forever. What I love about this scene is that there isn't any hesitation, any question or wonder of who should assume his powers. Tommy instantly says he knows who can take them and sends them to the power chamber to give the powers to Billy. However, when the Rangers return to the power chamber, they learn that during the command center's destruction, Billy absorbed a high dosage of negative proton whatsits, and essentially he can't take on the powers. I'm not sure why it is from behind the scenes that they couldn't have Billy become the Gold Ranger, but right. like with the Brad Hawkins thing, there's a lot of speculation and rumor on why it didn't happen but at least they acknowledge the possibility. Tommy leaves and tells everyone he thinks he knows someone else who can take on the power. While the Rangers use the Zeo Crystals, along with the power of the command center to keep yeah, really the up, energized, yeah. Tommy retrieves his candidate, and they head back on foot to the power chamber. With the power diverted, they can't teleport him, and they can't track him out of fear that Mondo will figure out what they're doing. The implication, as Tommy and the candidate run back, is that it's David, which would make sense. They established that he knew martial arts when they introduced him, <clears> and <throat> he already knows all the Rangers' identities. And any time the Rangers reveal themselves, it seems to almost be certain that those people will become Power Rangers. Kudos to the creators for doing an effective job of hiding his identity during the episode. As a little kid, my jaw dropped when they revealed him. Anyway, Mondo gets wise to the scheme and attacks the two, forcing them to run into their limited teleportation range. When they just barely get inside, Mondo initiates his new robot building technology process, using Neo-Plutonium armoring to enhance them. Why do I get the feeling it's gonna turn out to be glitter? Meanwhile, Rito and Goldar <laughs> sleep at the detective agency. Goldar starts to remember who he is and gets a message from Rita and Zed. They'll restore their memories and even <clears throat> restore Goldar's wings, but they must swear off ever doing anything good. And they must prepare. Since they've left, we'd only seen them once before in a dream in the goofy but wonderful episode It Came From Angel Grove, and in the previous episode, wherein they had hired Bulk and Skull to figure out where they came from, only to discover a message from Rita and Zed that it was time for them to come home. But now, the message is clear. Rita and Zed are coming back. The two awaken with their memories restored and gleefully push aside Bulk and Skull, stealing their bikes so they can get back to their Emperor and Empress. Tommy and the Candidate arrive, and the Candidate takes off his sunglasses. Is 
that the original Red Ranger? Oh, it's is that done who already? It is? Huh. Damn. All right, all I right. I didn't know it was already getting... I didn't know it was that short. Right, that was a, it. was only nine minutes. They flew by. Not even. They did mess it up, but they should have made it yeah. somebody else. Like, I get the tie-in. That would work perfectly, and then that didn't pull through. They're like, oh, my God, we got to figure something out. Right, yeah. Anticlimactic, I right. guess. Like, everybody's waiting, and they're like, and it's like almost oh, big. like... And then they rode around it where he's going to give him the powers to somebody else. It's right. Like, eh, I That's, see what you did there. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> Guys, if you like the video, go check out the channel. It is Linkara at top the fourth wall. The link is down below in the descripto, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace. Bye.